Make my dreams come true. All right, here we go, Alex. bro. Make my dreams come true. Okay, so we had a package arrive today. A package sent to us by one of our awesome FT community members, one of our awesome FT family members. He goes by the name of Marcus Muller. And check this out, check out what he sent us. This was actually sent to us as a Christmas gift. And along with it came very specific instructions. Marcus said he would like to see us fly this Lego quad heli rescue copter. I don't know how Marcus knew this, but uh, I, I have a, a long history with Legos and there's a special place in my heart specifically for Lego City. It's like my favorite. So we're looking at about 277 pieces. It's about a medium Lego build. I'm focused, I got a workstation. I'm gonna put this together and from there, we're gonna start seeing how and if it's gonna be possible to make this Lego fly. So we got bag number one, we got instruction books. Let's get to work. All right, real quick, before we get started, I wanted to take this time to thank the people that made this project possible, Vikings War of Clans. And if you guys aren't familiar with Vikings War of Clans, it is very similar to maybe some of the strategy games that you played back in the day. My personal favorite was StarCraft. This is a top-down real-time strategy game. The cool thing about Vikings War Clans is you can play them on your phone. Vikings War Clans has 20 million players online and the cool thing about it is that the play style is always evolving because people are constantly changing their strategies, which is therefore changing the way the game is played. So if you guys want to continue to support Flight Test, please do me a favor, check out the links below. You can actually download Vikings War of Clans for free. Not only that, but you also get 200 free coins and a free protective shield by using our link. So check it out in the description below and let's get back to work. All right, so check this out. This is uh, beyond uh, cooler than any of my expectations. This is really cool. And here's the best part. So we have our standard mini quad prop. Most mini race quads, which are the most common type of DIY quads, they all run off of a five or a six inch prop. This here is a five inch, which is the most standard. And as you can see, there's gonna be plenty of prop clearance. It's actually a little bit smaller than these. So if I take all these off, gotta make sure we get the correct rotation here. Correct prop rotation is key on quad Copters, you make want to make sure they're spinning in the right direction. I actually even like that better. The only difference is there's going to be a hunk and motor on there. Concerns, I got a couple of them. Uh, number one, as we talked about earlier, is real estate on the inside. I would like to pack as many of the electronics on the inside as possible. I'm okay with some wires running on the outside. I actually think that could look cool, but things like the flight control board, receiver, the big one is the battery. That's the biggest payload on any drone. So all that stuff I'd like to keep on the inside so it keeps its Lego Arctic air transport look to it because I think it looks awesome. This is our tiny, tiny little baby flight test gremlin micro quad. These things are the definition of fun, as I like to say. Um, but as you can see, it's a much smaller quadcopter here that we're working with. I think we might be able to use some of the electronic components out of these, speed controller, stuff like that. As for the motors, we're gonna need to step it up a notch. And so this is kind of a motor that's in between your standard race quad, which is larger, and something this small. This is an 1806 2280. This is actually our personal motor that we just finished developing over the past year. We're we're super excited about it. And I'm super excited about using it because I've never actually used one before. And to be using it on a Lego helicopter is just like the coolest thing that I could possibly imagine to use it on. So the big, the big challenge will be is getting the motors mounted securely on there and then also preserving the staggered nature of the current prop setup. So the rear props are a little bit higher than the front props. And so they have enough clearance because they overlap each other and we don't want those crunching into each other because that's no bueno. FT radials for the win. <laughs> okay, so this is what I found laying around the shop. And if it looks like this is a robotic brain, it's because it is. This is a all-in-one ESC and flight controller. This is actually one that we're using in our turbo gremlins, our little bit higher performance gremlin quads. If you want to find out more about our gremlins, you can check the link below. Each 
set of three wires is gonna go to each motor. They go into the board that's on the bottom. You can see it's actually stacked. So the bottom stack is a set of four electronic speed controllers, which are going to tell each motor how fast they should be spinning. And then on top of that is your flight controller, built-in accelerometers and everything like that to basically make the quadcopter fly. It is what's controlling the quadcopter, taking the inputs from, the, from your thumbs on the sticks and putting them out to the motors to make it do what you want it to do. I was trying to wrap my brain around how I'm going to mount a brushless motor, metal motor with screws to this Lego piece. The part where there's a space for the motor without changing any of the helicopter itself is right here. It's a two by two square, obviously. But when I looked real close, the bottom of these motors have two different hole spacings for motor mounts. And you technically only need two of these screws. Upon further investigation, I found that the hole spacing between these two diagonal Lego pegs, or whatever those are called, is the same exact spacing as the motor mount holes on the actual motor. So this might end up being a lot easier than I was anticipating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go drill some tiny little holes in this Lego piece on each side and then I'm going to see if I can just screw it directly to this and hope that it will still snap on there and I can have a motor mounted on this thing without using glue and without changing the plans of the actual Lego. So let's go see if I can figure it out. So look at this, this is really cool. I literally just mounted my motor to a Lego piece. This is what happens when two of your hobbies collide. Okay, so with minimal cutting, cut the nubs off, slice the dice off, and now it should, if my calculations are correct, we have successfully yes. <laughs> mounted a motor. I have some concerns about the structural integrity, but I am willing to use a little glue. To all the Lego enthusiasts out there, I am terribly sorry, but if I need to, I will. And at the end of the day, my Lego's gonna fly. Does your Lego fly? Cool thing about this is, it's relatively small compared to a lot of flight controllers. So I got the copter all torn apart here, as you can see. And surprisingly enough, there's actually quite a bit of real estate on the inside. When you have this tail section on the back, it is quite tail heavy and you want it to be as balanced as it can. I think that this is gonna have plenty of power that it should be somewhat forgiving for just basic flight. So what I'm thinking right now is electronics and flight controller will go into like the middle to the rear because they're the lighter and then the heavy battery will go on the front and hopefully it'll be a little bit balanced out. We'll see what happens. Can you give me a definition of craggle? You don't know what craggle is? Uh -uh. You've never seen the Lego movie? You don't know what the craggle is? No, dude, the, sorry. The craggle? I've never seen Have you really movie. never seen the Lego movie? Hey, nope. Oh my gosh, dude. It's no wonder every day for you isn't awesome. <laughs> awesome! Everything is awesome. There's a couple points of failure that I can sense, one of which obviously is the motors. We're gonna get some uh, craggle and we're gonna glue these on here. All right, dude. Dude, that's cool, man. So <laughs> she's here and it actually, there's plenty of real estate for all the electronics and a battery. Um, we'll list a, we'll make a list of all the components down below if you guys are interested in doing your own RC conversion with the Arctic Air Transport. But honestly, taking Legos and converting them to RC was actually a lot more gratifying than I would have ever imagined. Marcus, shout out to you. This Boom. flight, for better or for worse, is gonna be dedicated to you. A couple disclaimers and a couple tips. First things first is I did end up using a little bit of glue, but actually not as much as you would expect. I mainly just glued these pieces here that where the motors are mounted with a little bit of uh, CA and it made it really, really strong. The rest of the entire Lego is still held together by nothing other than Lego power, which is honestly pretty impressive. <laughs> it's very heavy now compared to what it used to be and it supports the weight no problem. Um, the other thing is that I did end up getting a second kit. It's only 28 bucks and uh, the reason why is because I ruined a couple parts when I was experimenting <laughs> with how to like mount motors and stuff like that, but also it gives you a whole extra pieces parts list of 
parts that match your model so you can use some pieces to reinforce the model where it's needed. And I did a little bit of that, not a ton, but like this piece up here wasn't originally here. I did that to just kind of make it a little bit stronger. And even at two $30 kits, you're at 60 bucks. That's cheaper than a normal mini quad frame. So in my book, that's still a win. <laughs> there you go, it's all good. So, all right, there's nothing left else to say here other no than- No more putting it off, dude. You yeah, got you gotta go we gotta fly. fly. I think I got motors going in the right direction. I got props in the right, and up is down and down is up. <laughs> So we're gonna put a battery in it, we're gonna go fly. Let's go. All right, now the cool thing about the Arctic Air Transport is the massive amount of prop clearance for Arctic operations. And so what that allows you to do is you don't even need to cut the grass, you don't need a landing pad. <laughs> you can just set her down there. She's not gonna chop grass like a normal mini quad. So the stakes are real. It's kind of like flying a real Arctic Air Transport. If you crash, it literally is still gonna break into bits and you have to rebuild it. <laughs> this isn't like your standard mini quad. All right, dude, so you know me, and if you guys know me, you like I taking two hobbies and just boom, just collide. Wham! <laughs> and uh, I have to say this has been a gratifying one. Yes. Uh, I'll probably revisit this if there's any other cool Lego kits. If you guys know of any cool Lego kits that you'd like to see RC, let us know down in the comments below, depending on how this goes, obviously. Yes, So here, yes. Go here goes nothing. Here we go, dude, let's go, come on. All right, make it happen, bro. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what are you hovering at right now? Uh, it's actually about 50% throttle, which is actually surprising because this is a heavy build, oh. smaller motors, and only a three cell battery. But that's kind of how I wanted it to behave. It feels like a big, heavy Arctic air <laughs> transport. <laughs> Dude, you made your Legos fly, bro. <laughs> this, is like a child, this is like a childhood dream come true, I'm not gonna lie. Being able to fly your Legos without using your hands, or I guess without holding it, is pretty amazing. Let's see if we can do a 360 here. Yeah, <laughs> yes, dude. Do you think the Arctic Air tr Transport has any uh, evasive maneuvers? I think so, dude. <laughs> Take her nice and slow so Jeremy can get her in frame. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some altitude. Yeah! <laughs> you just flipped the transport, dude. All right, here we go again. Oh, yeah. Dude, did you just do a backflip? A little bit of a backflip in the Arctic Air Transport. Dude, you think you can do a front flip? Here we go. Ready? A little yep. bit of wind up there up top. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now yes. we'll, we'll, we'll bring it in for some, a little bit ag more aggressive. More aggressive flying. flight maneuvers. <laughs> She's so cool, dude. She still has plenty of power. Oh, I'm gonna put her oh, down. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see the, the motor clicked up? <laughs> the wing went up a little bit. I cut her right at the right time, so hopefully the props didn't jab into her. Indeed, dude. Well played. Well son. done. That was actually a surprisingly more gratifying project than I ever could have imagined. <laughs> I love the Legos and I love RC. That's right. Put them did. together, it's bound to be a good time. Best so, again, favorite. let us know if you guys have any ideas for other Lego kits that you'd like to see converted RC. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.